Well, there we have it. 11 seasons of the good old Happy Brothers yeah. going through and, and watching ye olde Fraser. It's been a long year. It's been like, what, 260 episodes? Oh, right, of oh, Fraser. Yeah, I was like, we didn't do oh, that we didn't many do 260 podcasts. episodes. <laughs> We've done 44 episodes, or about 50 episodes if you include all the bonus episodes. bonus episodes as well. Um, um, and this will be the final of, of those bonus episodes. It will. We're getting treated today. Ewan yeah. has been collating all the results behind the scenes pouring over the spreadsheets and everything it's very yeah. exciting um and i think i will just hand it over to you because you've got a fun little format for us to i do treat today so i did mention i think it, it wasn't last week it was I think a couple of weeks ago mm. that like oh i've got this great idea for what we're going to do at the end and i i should say that it wasn't actually my idea so much as it was <laughs> an idea that one of our listeners sent to us and it's a really solid suggestion that we're doing our own little cb awards a little cb awards ceremony so thank you katie for sending in your uh suggestion and we're running with it and claiming that I came up with it myself because <laughs> I'm shameless. Um, you, you, gave, you gave Katie I, I'm credit. Giving you, I'm, giving you, I'm giving you credit Absolutely. now. So yeah, I've got some interesting little categories. Best, mm -hmm. etc. Worst, etc. And we're going to go through them. And I've gathered what I can from the just the ratings that we've given each episode. Mm -hmm. In case this is the first episode of LaFrance <laughs> that you're listening to, we've given each episode a rating from one to five. And now I've got like average scores for the seasons, for the discs, um, plus the, our, our total score for each episode. Mm -hmm. So I'm able to use that and break that down with the writers, the directors, you know, all interesting stuff. So I'm going to kick off. Before we oh, start, oh, before quickly, you, start. Before you yeah. kick off, put mm -hmm. your hand down and kick off. I should say yeah. that... You've been doing this all by yourself. Oh, yeah. Pretty yeah. much. Like, I've put in my ratings put for in my your, episodes yeah. throughout the series, but you're the one who's been collating it. You've got all the results. I have not seen them yet. You've not seen this them yet. This is all news to me, so I'm very, very excited. Yeah. And there is some really interesting stuff. Honestly, there's, there's some, yeah. like, surprising results. And that's what I'm looking for. That's yeah. what I'm looking for here. So we'll kick off with one that's not, not particularly surprising. Yep. But it does lead into some surprising stuff. Okay. Best season. Yeah. Right. What do you think, before I tell you what the answer is, what do you think the best season is going to be? Or how do you roughly think the seasons have, have like, trended I over time? I reckon... I reckon overall season, probably season four, would be my guess mm. if I was... Um, yeah. If, if I had to think off the top of my head... Last year of rewatching it, yeah, most consistent, high highly ranked episodes. I I would probably guess season four, maybe season seven. Okay, maybe. interesting. Um, interesting. What What have you got for me? So season four, you're right, was the highest rated. So season okay. four wins best season. C best um, season CB. <laughs> not only best rated out of both of us on average mm -hmm. but also individually was both of our highest rated so only okay. looking at our, our own personal rankings my highest rated season and your highest rated season so clearly that's very that, good that's fair yeah by quite a wide margin average episode score of 3.81 out of five that's high that is high for a whole season, and almost that's... almost four it had a lot of fours um which has kept it nice and high and actually amazingly there were only two episodes in the whole season that scored less than a three surely not yep. in the whole season yep oh i'm talking average scores the between, average, the, two between of us. the two of us like yeah because i think i gave a couple two and you gave a couple two but like generally they balanced out so there's oh. only actually two episodes that had a 2.5 and that's the lowest that the, the entire season what had. were they what were the two episodes they were liar liar yeah okay and ask me no questions which That's I think fair. definitely yeah. stand out as like the the less popular um on that. Yeah, like both of those episodes. Well, you gave Liar Liar a three and I gave it a two. And I gave Ask Me No Questions a two and you gave it a No, the other way around. You gave yeah, Ask Me No Questions a, a, a two and I gave I it a three. three. Um so yeah. Two two point fives. Wow, that's and that's the lowest. That's pretty good. That's lots pretty and good. lots and lots of fours, lots of fives as well. Um so yeah, really season four, season four, taking the crown wins. for our best season. But I was looking at the numbers and I was looking at what kind of came second and how the seasons have trended over time and whatever. So the second highest rated, um, on average, was season five. 
He's in it five. was, it was okay. only a little bit under. It got a 3.4 average. Yeah. And that was also my highest, my second highest rated season, mm-hmm. personally. What do you think your second highest was? I'd probably guess season seven. Season seven? Yeah. No, it wasn't. What was it then? Season eight. Was really? your second highest rated season of the whole show. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 3.54 was your average episode score for season eight. And a lot of it was because you gave it a lot of fives in the final disc. Okay, yeah, that's um, fa- yeah, that's fair. I think Daphne Returns, you gave a five. Yep. Um, the, the, All the Lana stories. The, the two-parter with yeah. Lana and Claire. And um, Kirby. And Kirby. <laughs> yeah. And then the finale, Cranes Go Caribbean, you gave a five as okay. well. So that's, like, really bumped up and, like, quite a lot of fours um, I de- throughout, yeah, the, I season as, that. throughout I the season as well. Yeah, because that. that stands out to me. I think I probably said right at the beginning, and as we were going into season eight, that, like, I would have thought of it as sort of mid, one of my mid least favourite seasons. Yeah. What did you figure out where it ranks in yours? Not particularly not high, kind of middle. Middle, um, okay. We will, but now, you know what, great segue. Now we can go into worst season. Worst season, yeah. So, yeah, worst season of the whole show. Um, and this is another one that we we agreed on. Um, no, actually, we didn't agree on it. We almost agreed on it, but we didn't quite. <laughs> So there are two seasons that were really, really close at the end. One of them just won, which was also your personal least favourite season. Mm-hmm. And the other one was my least favourite. And the two were very, very close. Um, Would what that do you think? Be season 10? Yeah. Worst ranked, I think. And then season 11 following it? Season 10 and 11 are the two. But 11 was actually just worse. Just worse. Uh, okay. season, season 10 was a 2.83. Mm-hmm. And season 11 was a 2.8. So there was very, very little in it. They're both pretty much tied and there was a little bit of a dip towards those last two, unfortunately. There's a bit of a gap. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Yeah, they they really did kind of tail off. Um, And we did talk kind of at length about which ones were, like what what it was about the seasons we didn't Mm -hmm. like so much and the episodes just became a bit boring. So there were a lot of twos Mm -hmm. in the last couple of seasons. And quite a few ones for me, especially. I mean, in season 11, I had, like, season 11, disc three, I was, like... You were pretty (laughs) brutal. Hate it. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so... Okay. Yeah, so season 11, 11, worst season. season, Which isn't super surprising. I think a lot of people do talk about the show kind of gradually going down in quality. So it makes sense that the last season... And you know what? The worst season of Frasier is still better than the majority of other sitcoms. It absolutely absolutely is. Um, It's not anything to totally balk at of like course not yeah. so unfortunately it gets the it gets the booby prize but yeah. it's still we still think of it very fondly yeah because it's still our favorite show um all right best disc best disc. getting a little bit more specific now what do you think the best disc of the whole show is right i'm gonna i'm gonna have to go on my gut here because mm-hmm. I, I i can't remember the rankings we gave it although since you mentioned the last season of Series 8. Mm. No, but you didn't rank them that highly, so it's probably not the best average. I didn't rank them that highly. Yeah. But Would that se- maybe be Season my- 8, Disc 4 was your highest rated. Highest, okay. You gave it a 4.5 wow. on average. I think it was, yeah, f- like five fours. Uh, sorry, four, f- four fives four. and two threes, would that be? Whatever, how, three, two, fours. two fours. Two fours, yeah. Two fours. Okay. Um, so I'm going to average both of us. I would guess last disc of season one mm-hmm. first disc of season two okay or maybe first disc of season four actually none of those Ooh, i mean okay. those are all episodes those all have really solid episodes in them like yeah. we've got in the last disc of season one you've got um author author author, author and you've got my, my coffee with niles. niles which are both great episodes um it, the start of season two you've got like the matchmaker flower child flower child is really good um and then what start of season four you've got the two mrs Mrs. cranes um uh the the one with rodney mixed doubles mixed doubles yeah um yeah so you've got some great episodes there but actually no neither of those okay so the the one that which was one of my personal favorites i actually have two the two discs were tied for my personal favorites, right. but one of them was also the highest overall, was season two, disc four, 
was the overall and favorite overall favorite okay. season two disc four so that's got someone to watch over me yep breaking the ice yep an affair to forget uh-huh agents in america part three mm-hmm. the innkeepers yeah okay and dark victory that's uh, that's kind of fitting that Is that's it? our yeah yeah <laughs> the the origin of la fresa stands out yeah. as our highest rated disc no i, I fair that's absolutely very fair. very yeah. very strong um the other one which so it got a 4.25 total mm-hmm. i gave it a 4.5 you gave it a four mm-hmm. um the other one that i gave a 4.5 was season four disc three I was going to say season four, disc three. Season four, disc maybe, three is another that's... really, really great one. To be honest, those are the two that would stand out in my mind. If I was going to pick a year ago, if I said which two discs are going to be the best, yeah. it would probably have been those two. Yeah. So you've four, got disc three doesn't surprise me. It's... Four for the Seesaw, To, to Kill, Kill a Talking Bird, Roz's Kranz and Goldenstein are dead, yeah. The Unnatural, Roz's Turn, and of course, Ham Radio. Ham Radio. Just an incredible yeah. episode. So, you know some some great stuff there Mm -hmm. and then like you you say so your your personal highest rated was season eight disc four you've got daphne returns the wizard and Roz, semi-decent proposal and a passing fancy Mm -hmm. uh a day in may and cranes go caribbean i I think it was gene smart i think Mm -hmm. it was gene smart and patricia patricia clarkson yeah i think that yeah yeah and of course brian klugman and brian klugman yeah of course yeah as kirby yeah. But his later Kirby episodes, I think, are better. His, his yeah, first it's ones more are good, into, into but his season nine ones, when he yeah. comes back are a lot more fun. Yeah. I I agree. Yeah. Okay, so, so that's the best disc. There best disc, best disc of the whole show. Do you have a lowest rated disc as I well? I do have a lowest rated disc of the whole show. Um, it might not surprise you because it is one that we did talk about fairly recently. W- would it... I'm, I, I don't know. I can't remember... I, my memory is like a goldfish. I don't mm. really remember, but would it have been season eleven, disc three, the one that you totally panned? I think it is largely because of that, but there weren't many episodes in that that you ranked very and highly I don't, either. I don't think I got them. So yet. I just, yeah, it is, yeah, season eleven, disc three, because I gave it a, an average score of two, which <laughs> is not so good low. at all. Um, <laughs> and it was a two point two five. So I think you gave it a like 2.5 average which isn't great either right yeah so you've got the Anne who came to dinner freudian sleep and caught in the act those three i all gave ones i really don't like them Mm -hmm. at all uh boo coots and ladders and match game i think all are okay but not yeah not great episodes so yeah the disc average unfortunately is quite low that's fair that's yeah but you actually so you like you were saying i gave those very very low scores Mm -hmm. But there are two other discs that you gave quite low scores, which are your two lowest rated tied with a 2.33 each. Oh, wow. um, do you have any idea what the your lowest rated ones would be? I'm trying to think what episodes I particularly dislike. I mean, immediately I'm thinking of, you know, season 10, season 11, somewhere sort of in the middle of season 10. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if it's maybe one of the earlier discs. That I was a bit more critical on. No, I don't know. Tell me. Yeah, Tell actually, me. yeah, you're right. You're, so the two, one of them was in season two, season yeah. two, disc two, which I think you remember we gave lots of twos. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. It, the it twos, was, that was the, the twos episode. The twos episode. So you've got the candidate, um, mm-hmm. adventures in paradise, part one and two. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Burying a grudge, seat of power, and Roz in the doghouse, mm-hmm. which, I mean. I don't think of as being particularly bad episodes, but definitely sort of mediocre, a bit below mm-hmm. average. So lots of twos there, which definitely brought it down. And the other one is season 10, disc four. The last disc, season 10. So okay. you've got the oh, whole, that, yeah, all the the Julia, whole Julia stuff. arc, yeah, yeah. Um, some assembly required, farewell Nervosa, the devil and Dr. Phil, fathers and sons, unfortunately gets mixed in with that's them because it's a, yeah, good, it's episode. a really good episode um but yeah unfortunately gets dragged down um analyzed kiss and a new position for Roz. so we get like a lot of the julia stuff in there which mm-hmm. is a shame um the devil and dr phil is not a great episode some assembly required i hate it's, as yes, well so not the best <laughs> yeah unfortunately that's so those two are your least favorite okay discs. there we go your two lowest I'm, rate I'm, I'm fine with that yeah uh, yeah okay Next category, and we're going, continuing on, getting more and more specific. Best episode. Very best episode. Best episode of the whole show. Well, now, how are you ranking this? So, I'm not ranking it yet. Okay. This is the point. We're going to talk about it here live. Okay. So, what I've got is a list of 17 episodes. Yeah. Which scored perfect five cups. Mm-hmm. We both gave them five cups. Mm-hmm. Right? 
in chronological order, mm-hmm. author, author, yep. My Coffee with Niles, The Matchmaker, Unaffair to Forget, The Innkeepers, Moondance, Look Before You Leap, To Kill a Talking Bird, Ham Radio, Halloween Part 1, The Maris Counselor, The Ski Lodge, Roz and the Schnoz, <laughs> yeah. Merry Christmas Mrs. Moskowitz, mm-hmm. Road Warrior, Daphne Does Dinner, and Good Night Seattle. Okay. Those are the 17 episodes that we give a perfect five cups. Notice that like 15 or something of them are from up until season seven <laughs> and then they are, they the are last two. They are all up until season seven and then there are two from seasons yeah. eight through 11. Um, so so you're asking me what I well just would we're, it we're or... gonna we can discuss okay. it here okay. which which episodes do you think we don't necessarily need to pick a number one but like which, <laughs> which ones among those stand out as being like the best episodes so I gotta give props to the finale right mm-hmm. first of all yep. because I think it rounds off the show on such a high note I think it does a really really solid job of rounding off a you know mediocre poor season yeah but ending it on a really really high note absolutely um and it's yeah you know it's got it we discussed it last week on the podcast so mm-hmm. i won't go into too much detail but i think it yeah it rounds everything off nicely so i've got to give props to that but if you were to come off the street and you and i was to say to you hey you should go watch fraser oh what episode should i watch i would probably give out of those, maybe two or three episodes. Okay. I would give Author Author. Mm-hmm. I would give Ham Radio. Okay. And I would give Road Warrior. Road Warrior. Okay. But in saying that, that's like to new folk to yeah, get yeah. them in off the street, you know. Fair enough. But if I was to give my absolute favorite, if you come to me or anyone else who watches Frasier and mm-hmm. already knows the show and say, what do you think is your favorite? Every single time I'm going to go to my coffee with Niles. Yeah. That is a single time. That definitely stands out as one of the best ones. I think it it best demonstrates what Frasier is good at. Yeah. Because it's not a big complicated plot. I mean, Frasier's really good with farces. Obviously, like, you know, the ski lodge is another like one lodge, yeah. I think is amazing. Yeah. But my coffee with Niles is just dialogue. It's just like the best written dialogue mm-hmm. from any comedy series and ever. Acting as well. And acting. Fantastic the acting, fantastic leads. performances. Yeah. You get a like great little bit of like like the emotional stuff as well as the whole thing with like martin is being really nippy with everyone because yeah. they've forgotten his birthday and like it's just it it has depth it's it does, great it does a fantastic episode so i am i'm inclined to agree with you that that's certainly one that i would say is the best another one that i'm very very fond of is Ros and the schnoz Ros and the schnoz is very funny because i think it has probably some of the funniest jokes across the whole show i would yeah i think it's maybe it sort of takes a bit to get into it and it tapers off a little bit towards the end, I think. But generally speaking, in the like the the crux of the episode is the the characters meeting um the the the, the couple. Uh, I, I forget Rick, their names. Rick's parents. Rick's parents. Yeah. Um, and they are the scenes when it's just like the characters meeting them and all these double entendres about them having big noses. It is, is incredible. I think some of the funniest stuff from the whole show. Um, so that definitely stands out as one of my favorites. The Innkeepers is one that I always love Innkeepers as well great, because I think yeah. it's got a great combination of really witty dialogue and also great physical comedy. I think from stuff like you know the cherries exploding and Roz coming into the kitchen it was, yeah, yeah, Daphne killing the eel with her bare hands. <laughs> you know, did we? Here's a question: Did we give? To kill a talking bird, a full five. It's not yes. on that list. We did. We did. Yeah. yeah, I was. I couldn't remember if you said it or not. Yes. But yeah, I was thinking that. That's maybe one I would recommend to people to watch. To kill well. a talking it's, bird is another really good one. Yeah, it's just with a lot of the classic dialogue. sitcom it's, stuff. Yeah, I yeah. think definitely. I think it really demonstrates how Frasier's like. It does the sitcom stuff, but like really well. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you have one? If you were to say one pick one from that list oh man i don't know like this is the problem it is way too difficult to is pick it, one i, I think I, there's I, so I, many yeah. for different reasons i like I, all of them i was thinking it's yeah 
Actually, one that we've not yet in the past couple of minutes talked about being so great. An Affair to Forget. An Affair to Forget is very good. Yeah. Maybe is possibly my favourite. It won an Emmy for Best Writing. It's undeservedly so. I think a few others of these episodes. I don't remember exactly. Mm-hmm. I stopped doing the Emmy rundowns. I've just realised. I, I was doing that like the end of every season for like... Oh, were you? Seasons like one, two and three. And oh, then I just I forgot. That. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. Well, we were we were talking uh, the other day when I was editing the, the episode. <laughs> yeah. And I gave you a message. I was just like, I'm just listening to the podcast. And we didn't do highlights for the final episode the final of the episode. show. <laughs> yeah. And you were just like... Oh no. <laughs> 43 episodes in a row we managed to do highlights every single week and not forget it. The very last episode we forgot and we're just like, ah well. We'll just have to go with it. Yeah. So there you go. Best episode. It's shared, I guess, between all 17, all 17 of those as yeah. standing out as fantastic episodes, but there we go. Best episode. We could of the do a poll. Show. We could do a poll on Twitter. We could do a poll on Twitter. Yeah. And see what people we think. We could do like a little a little tournament best episode yeah. of the whole show. Mm-hmm. keep an eye out for that yeah um the next one is going to be a little bit easier to pick from so the next one is worst episode okay there were only three episodes in the whole show that we both gave ones right there were plenty of episodes that we each gave ones mm-hmm. i've handed out my fair share of ones as have you yeah but there have only been three episodes that have both been one cuppers mm-hmm. um miracle on third or fourth street yep a man, a plan, and a gal, Julia, mm-hmm. from the start of season eleven. Uh, yeah, start of season eleven. Yeah, 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 start of season eleven, and the placeholder, also from the start of season eleven. Yeah. Um. Wow, those are the only three. Those are the only double three, ones. Those are the only three double ones. Wow. Okay. I mean, I'm going to quickly scroll through the spreadsheet to double check, but yeah, I think if you were if you were to ask me what my worst, my my least favorite episode of the show is. I would probably say Miracle on 3rd or 4th Street. Mm. So that kind of tracks. I think it's an episode I always skip. I really don't enjoy watching it. I hate the scene at the end. It really yeah. just oh, it gets under my skin. I just can't watch it. But in saying that, now that you mentioned the start of season 11 with Julia, mm-hmm. is also really just so hard to watch. Yeah. So I don't know. I'd, I'd, probably, I'd maybe just go Miracle on 3rd or 4th Street just yeah. to... Again, ahead, but. It, it is really hard to pick amongst yeah. those of like which ones I really don't like. But yeah, it could be any one of those. I think the placeholder I is maybe my least favorite of those three. It's probably the most dull. It's just a really it's definitely dull not episode. interesting. Like the whole premise is based around Fraser having a bad date yeah. with Anne Hodges, mm-hmm. and that. But that's only the last what five minutes, maybe maybe ten at a push yeah there's so much like dead space at the beginning which Mm -hmm. makes it so much worse (sighs) yeah 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 that definitely stands out as not not a good episode that's unfortunately and that kind of tracks with well does it no what did we do worst disc well yes well oh yeah it was actually slightly later than that it was the other one with ann hodges was on the worst disc yeah but um yeah fair enough placeholder yeah no i get i yeah yeah yeah. Don't begrudge that being mm-hmm. at the bottom of the list. <laughs> yeah. Okay, there you go. So that's our three least favourite episodes. Yep. Next category for award, best guest character. Okay. I'm going by guest character rather than guest actor because I'm thinking like specifically, you know, like the characters that stand out as being yeah. really great. So I've got a list here that I have written up that stand out to me as being really good. Mm-hmm. Feel free to disagree if they're characters that you don't like or give me a shout if there are other ones that you think of that that you have missed or do you okay. want to rattle some off now that no, you think no no well, i was just going to say by guest character are you one episode one episode characters or any recurring there's one in worst guest characters actually there's a couple in worst guest characters that are have been in multiple episodes okay best guest character there's only one that's appeared in two episodes and it was only like introduced at the end of one episode and then was in all of the next one. Okay, I'll let you. I'll let you rattle them off. Will be obvious. So, yeah. okay, the list that I've got for best guest characters: um, Patrick Stewart as Alistair Burke okay. in The Doctor yep. Is Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. James Patrick Stewart as Guy in as The Ski Guy. Lodge. Yeah. Patty Lapone as Aunt Zora in Beware of Greeks. <laughs> okay. Derek Jacobi as Jackson Headley in The Show Must Go Off. Mm-hmm. 
Rene Aubergenois, Dogs Chooksbury. Actually, okay. there's another one that's in yeah, two yeah. episodes that I forgot about. Uh, from Fraser's Edge and The Wizard and Roz. Um, Michael Keaton as Blaine Sternin. I know one that you don't like, <laughs> yeah, but, but I absolutely love. Yeah, yeah. Um, from Wheels of Fortune. Brian Cox as Harry Moon in Moons mm-hmm. Over Seattle. Dundee's own Brian Cox. Yeah, um, represent. Yeah. <laughs> Jennifer Tilly as Kim from Miss Right Now. Okay. Maybe not as noticeable, but I just love Jennifer like, yeah, yeah, so much. Fair. Uh, David Ogden Steers as Leland Barton, mm-hmm. or Barton Leland, whichever one it is, <laughs> from Fathers and Sons. Uh, Donald O'Connor as Harlow Safford from Crane vs. Crane. Oh, I love Donald O'Connor. And Brian Bedford as Edward from Out With Dad. Yeah, okay. Um, hmm. I started writing them down and then I was like, I can't make a list without putting this person in. And I just kept adding more and more. So it's quite a long list. Yeah, I mean, you're, if we're going, yeah, that's a tough one, right? Mm -hmm. Immediately, Guy jumps out. Yeah. James Patrick Stewart jumps out as Guy in the Ski Lodge. Very funny character. character. I think he's fantastic. Um, And Patrick Stewart as well, actually. The top two on your list, I think. Patrick Stewart would probably jump out as well. But in saying that, he's maybe a little bit less well-known as a guest character on Frasier because it's a, a later series, mm. because um, it may be out with... No, that's not out with Dad, sorry. Um, uh, the, doctor the Doctor is, is out. out. Um, is maybe ranked a little bit lower mm. than the Ski Lodge would be. Yeah. You know, the Ski Lodge is sort of quintessential Frasier, whereas doctor's out maybe you wouldn't always make it on that list yeah i think the reason the doctor is out is so good is because of patrick stewart As a fair whereas point, yeah. the ski lodge would already be a great episode but james patrick stewart's performance as gee just makes it's it up, better yeah. so yeah i can i can see that i'd throw one more into the mix yeah i can't remember the actor's name and mm-hmm. that's really bad of me but um tom from oh of course tom duran from tom uh, duran, the matchmaker the matchmaker yes and agents in america part three and it yes yeah um he's very good he right. is yeah. great especially in the matchmaker to be fair is mm-hmm. yeah later one's not really noticeable um notable I'm sorry sure but yeah the matchmaker i think I, i'd maybe chuck him into that list i don't think i'd put him hmm. at the top er- so, eric lutz eric lutz yeah that's tom duran so if you're asking me to pick just one mm. i'd pr- probably go with Guy yeah i think yeah i i yeah you know what i think i have to agree with you he is fantastic like we've got you know it's an honor just to be nominated isn't it? <laughs> well if we're going by list you know we can put this out on twitter or something and see what people think yeah, you see know, what other people this think. is our short list of best best sort of cameo best, best guest, guest stars. characters yeah um um yeah that's that's a good list. Some, yeah. some really great ones on there like I knew that Michael Keaton is one that you don't necessarily like more because the I think like the episode I know you really don't like the episodes, but like I really I I think he's so fantastic. I think the character, yeah, is Yeah. It, it, you have to like that kind of character, that sort of sleazy scumbag. Definitely. <laughs> and if you don't, then it's it's difficult to appreciate. Mm-hmm. So I, yeah, it's nothing against Michael Keaton. It's just that character is just so difficult to mm-hmm. watch. You know what's something that's actually really interesting? I forgot to mention when we were talking about best and worst discs. Pretty consistently throughout the podcast, I've been more critical than you have mm-hmm. of a lot of episodes. So a lot of the discs, generally, you will have given it a higher average than I have. But I started looking through at which ones I gave a higher average than you did. Mm-hmm. And there are... Every single one of them has one of two things. Either a BB episode, yep. which I will always, I think, pretty much always give a five. <laughs> and if it's an episode with a really good villain. Okay. So like Wheels of Fortune, like the Crucible on the first disc. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, like uh, Word to the Wise Guy uh, the with Nathan Lane, um, Fool Me Once, Fool me once. Shame on yeah. You, Fool Me Twice. Like those, ep- though any of those episodes, I have given the you disc a higher that. average than you. Okay. Any other ones, you have given a higher average. That's, so yeah. we can really see what episodes I love, <laughs> because it's like if a character like that is in it, you've got a type. I I absolutely <laughs> do have a type. <laughs> they're all con men. That's the thing. They like are, they're, they're all, all con artists and like liars. You have like white and- collar criminals. <laughs> That's yeah. Um, 
they're no good for you, you and you shouldn't you shouldn't be chasing these guys. <laughs> you shouldn't be chasing the liars and the cheats <laughs> and the white collar criminals. Um so there you go. Best guest character. We've got a lot of a lot There's of great lot names of on the list, there, yeah. but also, yeah, I think James Patrick Stewart definitely stands out. I was thinking of like which one has not only is in a really good episode and gives a really good performance, but they need to have just like lines or bits of dialogue that stand out as yeah. being incredible. And I think Guy definitely has that. Really? <laughs> yeah, just some of his deliveries. and <laughs> Oh, he's so fantastic. Yeah, he's great. Such a wonderful character. Next up, worst guest characters. Okay. So... Anne. <laughs> <laughs> a much shorter list. And then there's one here that I... Or one which is actually two people that I know that you're definitely going to disagree with. Mm-hmm. Um, So... Manu Habib from the Focus Group, played by Tony Shalhoub. Mm-hmm. Julia Wilcox, like I mentioned, one that was yeah, kind of not yeah. necessarily a guest character, but I, I, yeah, I'd maybe was sort of she's like a recurring guest, character. But, yeah, um, yeah, very certainly not a character not that we like liked watching. Yeah. Carlos and the Chicken. Oh, you which I'm like putting them, yeah. together. I cannot stand Carlos and the Chicken. I know that you're maybe a little bit. I quite y- like you, them, you definitely yeah. like the episode more. I absolutely hated them. Um, Shish Kebab, uh, played by Griffin Dunn oh, from The Friend, um, and Anne Hodges oh, at the yeah. end as well. I mean, immediately Anne jumps out to me. Um, nothing against uh, Julia, Sweeney. Julia Sweeney. But yeah. yeah, Anne's just such an unlikable and irritating character. Yeah. Um, especially in the placeholder. It's just almost unbearable to watch. Yeah. Um, if you're including Julia on in that list, yeah, I'd I'd definitely put her at the top. But I would probably argue if she's you argue more that she's more recurring than character. guest, that's fair enough. Um, the other one, Shish Kebab, mm-hmm. I think I'd probably I, I find the friend really difficult to watch as well. Yeah. I think it's just because of how uh, th- th- I hate those kinds of people who just can't take a social cue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and can't understand what's going on around them. So Bob, yeah, I, I struggle to watch Bob, and then just how Fraser treats the whole situation. Oh in the end. God, awful. that's not that's more the episode than more the episode. Than the but character. yeah, I, I think yeah. So Anne or Bob, I think are definitely up there. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. I think it is maybe more the episode, the focus group that I dislike rather than um, Tony Shalhoub I mean, playing playing. Great, Mario I, love Tony I don't Shalhoub, but particularly dislike him. I find the character annoying. Yeah, yeah, yeah which adds to me not liking the episode so much, but I don't necessarily... It's not like a bad... Actually, none of these are bad performances. should clarify. We have said true. several times, I think it takes a great actor to make a character unlikable just as much as to make a character likable. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just as impressive a feat for me to, like, hate the character that yeah. you are playing as for me to love the character you're playing. So definitely not a slight on any of the actors. These are some great actors yeah. doing great performances, and that's why I hate them so much, is that they're meant to be unlikable. Um... Yeah, so there you go. There's also some some not very not well liked episode. I yep. think Anne Hodges definitely jumps out as being the immediately yeah the, 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 the least favorite. Uh, and next, the second last category, mm-hmm. best writer. Okay. So this is one that I know that you might not necessarily be able to have an idea of because this yeah, certainly I'm, came I'm, from processing the data more. You might yeah, have an idea. I mean, I'm really bad at. at writers directors yeah. things like that I'm, I'm okay with it with sort of movies but when it comes to a show it's like, not something i really pay attention to yeah um individual ones probably is a bit should difficult. but <laughs> mm. um so yeah I'll, I'll let you take take it take it away with this one yeah the the issue is there are a few episodes where there have only been it'll be like that writer or director it'll be their only credit yeah which means and I was worried that this was going to happen. Both best writer and best director have only written and directed one episode <laughs> each. <laughs> so best writer was uh, the best writer, the, the writer of author, author, or actually one of two writers on author, author, uh, Jerry Perzigian. Okay. Um, and because he only wrote that one episode and we give it a five out of five, F-O-5, that's... he is batting <laughs> a perfect score okay. of five out of five. <laughs> so he uh, automatically <laughs> gets the so. number one spot. Um, no less impressive, I don't no, think, that's... that he has contributed towards such a fantastic episode. Popped in, but dropped a perfect five and then flew away. <laughs> yeah, and then that left. was it. Yeah. Um, second highest, I should say, is um, 
a 4.5, which is still very impressive, but also right, it's the only wrote two episodes where we've scored four and five, which again, still very impressive. Very um, Don Siegel, who co-wrote Author Author mm-hmm. with Jerry Prezegian, and also Someone to Watch Over Me. Mm-hmm. Okay. And William Lucas Walker, who wrote Roz's Krantz and Goldenstein Are Dead and Are You Being Served? which are both, I think, very good episodes. They're all... I'm, I'm noticing a trend, but they're all... Up, that's up till season five. Yeah. Or season six. Are I you think being served? Season... Are you being served season four? Is it season four? End of season four, yeah. Oh, yeah so, yeah, you're absolutely right, yeah. So, yeah, they're, they're still quite early in the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Excuse so there us. you go. And if we're looking at only people who have had a significant number of credits, I don't know where we should put the cut off, but um, if we're only looking at writers with a significant number of credits, the winner was Joe Keenan, um, who wrote actually 22 episodes. It was the most episodes written by a single writer. Um, average score of 3.77. Still pretty good. Which is very good. That's still the good higher, average, higher, higher good average yeah. score. So there you go. And best director, like I say, unfortunately, we're kind of in the same position <laughs> where the highest average score was Ken Levine, who wrote several episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, didn't stand out as one of the best writers, but still a very good writer and got a perfect five because he directed Roz and the Schnoz. Okay. Which is a fantastic episode. Yep. So he gets <laughs> another perfect five score mm-hmm. and wins by default. That's, yeah. <laughs> from only writing Fair one enough. episode. Um, Second highest was uh, Joyce Gitlin, who directed Roz's Turn, which got a four. I Mm -hmm. gave it a five and you gave it a three. Um, And then next up after that was David Lee, who wrote, who directed 40 episodes. So several episodes there and an average score of 3.48. He was also one of the show's creators. So, I mean, he wrote both the first and last episode. Okay. David Lee. Yeah, I mean, 40 episodes getting a 3.5, that's... Pretty decent. It is, yeah. I mean, it's our rating, so it doesn't it's matter. our rating. So matter yeah, to but... anyone other than us, but like, <laughs> yeah, that, that's pretty good, though. I I hold our ratings as gospel. That's frankly, it, yeah. I think this is the <laughs> this is the objective r- ranking of which episodes are good and which episodes are bad. Okay, so there you go. Yeah, that's winner of best director, Ken Levine. Congratulations, Ken. Congrats. That's it. There that's we go. It? Oh, that's it? Oh, that's it? Oh, that's right, it. Yeah, sorry. Director, that's the sorry, yeah. best writer and director. I did think about doing worst writer and worst oh, director, that's... but I figured that's a bit mean. <laughs> it's a bit difficult as well because, as you say, there's a lot of episodes that have multiple. Yeah, yeah. If you've got, you know, just because someone contributes a little bit towards an episode, you know, one time, yeah, they're, they're going to immediately get <laughs> worst know, totally worst right. writer or worst yeah. director, which would be a shame. Um. No, that was so very interesting. Go. Well done, going through all the data. It, all, took, it took some time. I have some graphs. Unfortunately, this is an audio format, yes, so I can't really show the audience. So but I do have some interesting graphs if you would like to see them. I, well, tell oh, you I'll what, show you afterwards. Uh, yeah, show me afterwards, and then we'll mm-hmm. put them up on Twitter. We'll put them up on Twitter so on everyone Twitter can later, see. And everyone can see our... You can check out your, your lovely graphs. Twitter or Instagram, <laughs> and you can see how, how everything's worked out. Yeah, I think it's worked out pretty well. It's, I don't... There were a few things that were sort of a bit of a surprise mm. i think overall a lot of the the good episodes a lot of the bad episodes were pretty on par with what i was expecting yeah there was a few surprises in there but mm-hmm. overall i think it was yeah. i think looking at the one of the things that really surprised me is going by the the kind of season averages we had kind of season 10 and 11 were like I mentioned, those two were a little, they were like noticeably below mm-hmm. average. There was a dip there. But after that, it was season one. Season one is season the third one, worst yeah. season of the show. That Honestly, it doesn't surprise me. Mm. I think season one has some pretty low ranked episodes. There are a fair few ones. There are some like absolute gems yeah. in amongst those. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. I think it might partly come from because we were just getting started with our ratings at that point. Well, maybe we were maybe a little yeah. bit more mixed mm-hmm. um, as opposed to by the end of the show, we kind of, we had a, a bigger scale of the best episodes and the worst episodes so yeah. everything sort of averaged out. Um, we have to go back now. We have to just we're start again. Like a continuous loop. While keep we going <laughs> over and over again. <laughs> refine our ranking system. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for putting that together. You're very welcome. But congratulations to all of our winners yeah. <laughs> and losers yeah. of, <laughs> of these awards. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll keep in touch. We'll mm-hmm. put some put some polls and whatnot on Twitter and yeah. 
get the charts up and see what see how you guys agree with us see yeah. if there's any shockers in there for you as well there was there was an announcement recently from kelsey Grammer. actually there was, there was. he um uh rehearsals are starting for the revival in yeah. february i noticed there was a couple of additional and a couple bits of, of additional casting news of casting well. yeah so we know that we've got david as mm-hmm. a main character as or a, as a fairly main character and also his i think is it his roommate, flammy, roommate, roommate, or, roommate yeah or frederick's roommate or something yeah uh who's a new original character which mm-hmm. is interesting yeah i'm and excited we'll, to see those so who knows maybe sooner than you think that we'll be yeah. back doing some more rankings of the revival yeah i don't know how kind we'll be on i don't know i really don't know we may have to switch the format up a little bit yeah maybe do like episode a week episode for episode yeah know. we'll see interesting see how it goes Mm -hmm. well as always thank you for listening and we'll see you soon yes i hope (laughs) bye-bye